right, so um, hi everybody. My name is uh, Travis Johns, uh, and I am here to uh, to demonstrate uh, maybe not uh, my my official rig, but a rig nonetheless. It's uh, my least instruments that I've had and I've built. But uh, today's focus will be, uh, I guess, on analog stuff. Fun, right? Uh, so anyhow, I've um, been doing electronic music now, I guess, for almost a decade or so. I kind of got into it uh, due to, I guess, a dissatisfaction with the. Uh, I guess the current counterculture of uh, where I come from, which is uh, the country aspect of upstate New York. Um, and was, I guess, originally into punk rock, but suddenly when every single Tom, Dick, and Broseph is uh, listening to punk rock, what else do you listen to to set yourself aside from them? And uh, I guess my choice was uh, quasi-academic electronic music of the non-idiomatic fashion. Um, so did that, went to college for that. Uh, moved out to the Bay for grad school for that, and uh, when I was in the Bay, started actually building instruments, um, specifically like these guys right here, if Matt will zoom in. Um, and did that, a lot of it was um, just a kind of a, while working with electronic music, realized there was a certain degree of, uh, I guess, gear fetishism within within the scene, where it's like, oh, you have this box, and it makes this sound, oh, you need to have this, and oh, it's, a, it's, it's this, zero this, and that zero that, and uh, decided I would rather have it be more about the sound as opposed to trying to either collect, you know, certain amounts of, I guess, fetishized instruments or trying to exploit other ones, and um, that's when I started building. Uh, I was mostly primarily inspired by a synthesizer builder and friend of mine from Baltimore named Peter Blaster, as well as, um, I guess, some of the old chestnuts, for instance, uh, say Don Buchla or David Tudor, just uh, with some of their, I guess, more uh, primitive designs and how to flush out uh, just things that sound amazing and are really, really kind of based on very simple principles. Um, so to kind of give you, um, yeah, stand up. Uh, to give you a kind of a run through as to what we have, um, these two right there are actually kind of two flavors of the same thing. Um, they're three uh, kind of quasi-unstable oscillators and also um, a kind of primitive filter that kind of works together creating interesting sounds. I guess I'll turn one up so you can hear it. All right, so. Oh, uh, which one are we listening to? Uh, that's, that's that one you're listening to. Right. So. So we can see it's got two knobs and a bunch of posts. Uh, yep, posts are basically machine screws. I use, like using machine screws just because um, from there you can use pretty much it's a universal in and out, input and output. You can use it as a voltage interrupter, kind of an interrupt point. But same thing, say if you were to take a post from uh, from this modular synth here and put it next to it, suddenly you're creating a network system to it. So it's uh, an input and an output and an interface. Say if you were to use something like just say an um, eighth inch jack or a banana jack, you're kind of limited to a specific format. This is Primitive but uh, universal, which is, is kind of a nice concept. So those two, the yeah, synthesizers. Uh, this one uh, right there is a, uh, I guess the stab is more of a prototype and looks fan more fancy than anything it actually does. It's a single oscillator with uh, with interrupt points onto it, so it creates just various different sounds. I was thinking about using it as kind of a a, a preset control box, but uh, there's there's still some things that need to be done to it. So, so to this one example, mostly pretty much has twelve on off switches. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the only control to it, yeah. Right, ten ten on on off switches. Mm -hmm. And so, nice fancy sounds. You can kind of get a little bit of a variation for such as. Etc. Sometimes it's more <laughs> dramatic than others. Uh, usually I tend to run a, a lot of my equipment off of batteries just because uh, as you're pulling in the voltage, you can actually change the pitch a little bit more dramatically if you're using, to say, a wall wart. That one at this case is using a wall wart, so it's a little, little bit more stable. But okay. then again, considering we're worried about stability or instability, whatever. Um, so to continue on, I guess with this this torty force, um, this right here is uh, a design of my own. It's actually it's interesting the fact that this box is both passive and active. It's a passive ring modulator, something that's gonna the mosquito sound. Uh, something that I pulled off of, uh, I guess, was inspired by a, a lot of uh, David Tudor's works. Um, so a passive ring modulator box that can actually be used as a passive ring modulator. We have carrier modulator output, but there's also an active section in it as well, where it's basically running in filtered filter output. So it's, depending on how you use it can be rather dynamic or just you know just a simple modifier or whatever. Um, along the lines of uh, this this creature right here is uh, that's actually an old uh, modular synth from uh, I want to say the mid 1970s to say that that is old or whatever. But um, I found it uh, when I was 19 years old and I've been kind of just uh, taking it apart and rebuilding it uh, whenever I have time. So it's partially the original circuitry, partially custom circuitry as it goes on. And then uh, a couple, um, I guess, more consumer boxes just to make things sound interesting. And a Kai filter, um, 
two distortion pedals I'm using as preamps, and of course delays, because delays make things sound so science fiction and all of that. Um, so, yeah, that's, I guess, a, uh, a nice overview of my rigs. Uh, do you have any uh, questions, Mr. Matt, about any of this? Well, let's get, let's get into uh, one of these, because I, right. I, I look at this and I get confused. I see two knobs, and they're okay. not necessarily volume and pitch, and then I see posts that sometimes when you play these, you touch them with your fingers, and then I also see you've got banana clips. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess my first question is, like, do you do you wind up switching these? Does this post always have to be connected to this post? Um, no, I mean, the way that I use the, uh, the alligator clips or banana clips or whatever is I use them more as a way of, uh, I guess, an extra set of hands. So uh, you can play these things just by a simple body contact, just your, you know, your fingers on the actual post itself. But you can also almost create a little bit of a preset, not to say that it's going to do the same thing every time, but you can have it so that it's like, okay, I'm going to set this up, it's going to, going to make sounds, and then I'll work on something else. So you kind of can create a little bit more of a complex sound as opposed to just having one instrument that you're concentrating on and circuit bending, or well, not really circuit bending, but performing in a circuit bending style. So, And uh, the these guys right here, they're just, uh, it's a set resonance, but it's just a it's just a, a, a filter sweep. It's There's really no volume control. When I play these uh, guys, I guess, live, where it's just, it'll just be a box running mm -hmm. to an amplifier or whatever, um, usually I'll have, say, the box to a volume pedal, just to an amplifier, and that's that's it. Sometimes a little bit of delay, but very, I don't know, try to exploit the actual sounds of the instrument as opposed to the processing of it. So. Okay, and getting into exploiting the sounds of the instruments, mm -hmm. um, so you can't necessarily play a melody uh, <laughs> with, with this, so to speak. You can't... Uh, sit no, down no, and play you, you Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or... Nor, nor would I really want to. I mean, I guess uh, my performance and my musical sensibilities tend to be more textural than anything. So, no, you can't necessarily play a melody on it. I mean, I suppose you could try if you'd like to, but, I don't know, to have an exercise in futility just for the sake of having an exercise in futility, you know, there's there's always other instruments out there that you can play a melody on. Can you give so. us a, a quick, like, uh, you know, with sound, a verbal walkthrough of, of how you play? Um, yeah, one sure. Um, which, which one would you like to see play? Well, uh, whichever of these you think will give the most astounding right. results. I like this one. Okay. That's a nice one. Okay, so... Right now it's just kind of doing its thing. It's just kind of oscillating. This is, uh, yeah, I guess this is a good volume, so they can hear the, the speaking and the music in at the same time. So right now, it's just we have a kind of a patch preset into it. And then from there, I'm just kind of interrupting and sending the voltage elsewhere. So just move this from there to there. These two are the filter inputs on it, so... And then the rest of the banks up in the top are the oscillator inputs. So right now what I'm basically doing is, uh, similar to circuit bending, I'm taking the voltage and basically setting it through my body, putting myself as part of the circuit. But at the same time, I'm not necessarily bending the circuit, I'm just simply becoming a part of it. I don't know, just to emphasize the difference between this and, say, circuit bending or whatever. But nice kind of versatile, as we were talking about before this, uh, before we started filming, there really isn't a uh, kind of a set, uh, a set performance uh, practice to it. It's mostly just uh, intuitively finding something that works and just sort of uh, working with it. I guess it would lend itself well to, uh, to uh, I guess, an improvisatory nature, just because there really is a degree of spontaneity designed within the instruments themselves. Not to say that you could use it exclusively for that, but eh, that's my output at least. <laughs> 